Hey guys, I want to talk to you today a little bit about the Scott Halo release. It's new for 2016, and the first thing you're going to notice about this release is when you put it in your hand, it's, it's extremely comfortable. It's contoured to fit your fingers, it has an ergonomic design, it's made of brass, and has a fully enclosed index finger hole, which is really important when you make a good shot because you want to be able to twirl it and put it back in your holster. I mean, we all know that's a big deal, right? But seriously, the Halo is new for 2016, and since it came out, I've been shooting it. And the one thing that I noticed about the release right from the very beginning is because of its brass construction, it's a little heavier than the aluminum models, which is what I had been currently shooting. The one thing about that feel, uh, to me, at least the sensation it gives me, is that when I'm at full draw, because the extra mass weight that's in my hand, it almost feels like I'm getting in my anchor position better or more consistently. So that gives me a little bit more confidence in the shot. As most hinge style releases, uh, this release you can set up with a click or without the click. Uh, that's just a personal preference. I actually use both for different situations. I primarily use a click outside when elevation is an issue and anchor uh, position might feel a little awkward. Um, whereas indoors, I don't use the click because I don't want the extra um, added anticipation of the shot actually firing. So uh, there's a couple different ways you can set that up. Now, if you've been shooting an older Scott Longhorn or any of the Scott releases uh, prior to this one, with the exception of maybe the anchor release, you'll notice that there's a difference in the overall length um, from the bottom of the handle where the index finger uh, holds the handle to where the hook actually is. So that might make your draw length feel just a little bit different. The measurement on this one is an inch and five eighths from this pivot right here in the low part of this handle to where the hook is at. Or if you're using the metric system, it's four centimeters, roughly four, maybe even 41 millimeters. Um, but anyway, that is uh, the measurement there. So you might need to change your, your, your loop length or uh, the draw length of the bow to accommodate the feel in the change if you're uh, upgrading from say an older release. I'd like to share a little advice uh, for you shooters that are uh, maybe contemplating starting uh, with a hinge release or maybe you've been shooting a thumb button style for a long time and maybe target panic has set in a little bit. Um, this is not so much for the advanced uh, hinge shooter but more for the person that's struggling. Now those of you that know me since 1999, I've been a professional. What you may not know is in 1998, I had target panic so bad that I couldn't even put my pin on the target without thumping that thumb button. And I mean, it was really, really bad. And uh, you can ask Eric Griggs or Dave Cousins because they, they witnessed that at the ASA Classic in 1998. I completely missed an antelope. Um, so the thing that got me over the hump because as I said in 98 I was in severe target panic mode and in 1999 I turned professional and at my very first ASA tournament I took second place. I was actually leading going into the shoot off and lost to Colin Booth. So there had to be a major turnaround there and that happened because of my friend Bobby Ketcher. Uh, he actually told me what I needed to do was take all of the releases that I currently owned, give them to my dad or give them to him or sell them or do something with them where I can't have access to them. He handed me a hinge release and he set the travel on it very, very long. So I would have to really, really rotate the release in order to make it fire. And it wasn't something that I could do easily or it wasn't something that I could anticipate. So it made my mind uh, at ease it made my mind uh, stop anticipating and freaking out when the pin got where it needed to be. So all it made me do was focus and aim, which was great, that's exactly what I needed. So with the release set really long, I had to rotate it by the hand a whole bunch. Now I get questions about this all the time, how do you, how do you execute your shot? Well, I've heard Jesse Broadwater explain how he shoots his shot. 
and I've heard Levi Morgan explain how he shoots his shot, and Rio, and, and um, you know, a host of other great professional shooters. The funny thing about all of it is they all have a little bit of similarities, but they're all a little bit different. Now, when I'm explaining to people about the hand rotation, the reason why I explain it that way is because the majority of people that I'm dealing with are struggling with target panic or some form of panic or anticipation that causes them to freeze up on the shot. And so for me, I couldn't beat that with a, with a click in the release because the click told me that it was getting ready to fire. So I had to beat it without the click and the release set very long. So I hope that's a, a little bit of advice that you guys might be able to take and move forward if you're struggling with target panic or target panic issues or maybe you're on the cusp of you know, purchasing a new release. Uh, look into the Scott Halo. It will definitely provide you with uh, all the accuracy that you're looking for. And uh, until next time, guys, uh, shoot straight.